And I was looking for something that I could really find a, a new challenge. Let's put it that way, a new challenge. And of course, the opposite, the absolute opposite was etching. on a plate, a uh, copper plate, then while you are working on the copper plate, the idea is if you have, um, you, you put your uh, plate, your copper plate in acid for it to be actually, it's called bitten, it's biting. It is even the name of etching comes from German, that means biting in Danish, I think it says. Uh, etching comes from that, the fact that you're going to put that and it's your controlling how deep or how much or where the acid is going to attack. Why did I go that way? It, I, I think really, truly, it was this reaction and, and it was directly connected with my drawing because it's very, very graphic. Well, it's one of the graphic arts in any case. So I started with uh, thinking that, well, it would be some just novelty, and then it got, I got passionately involved and really just went on for about five years. Crazy, 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 because materially, as much as fresco, or even more so than fresco, there's, there's very little market for it. I started the, the etching and I passionately fell in love with it and uh, on and on and on and on. And then what do I get? I get this thing of uh, the print of the year for uh, the uh, uh, Cleveland Museum of Art, which is one of the greatest museums in the world. Really is, really is, really is. And the uh, Far Eastern collection is one of the best in the world. happiest moments in my life was the whole thing was really with excellent people working there and then the, and the curators buy my stuff for themselves you know I mean oh, I never mind I respect critics but that to me was the top accolade really just absolutely marvelous so the relationship was very good and even the sales uh, they were not generally selling there but uh, well I had very beautiful sales and then things continued from then on I had the first one-man show of prints in Philippine art history at, in 1957, and that was at the uh, RC, uh, Philippine Art Gallery, PAG, yes. Okay, I did this exhibition and they would be angry to see the same work they thought that I was copying myself and selling. It's a multiple, it is a multiple, but each of the pieces are an original. Then how is that possible? And I couldn't find an answer, and a very clear one eventually uh, came to my mind, is your fingerprint will always be an original. Always. Forever, even if you're dead, they can still, okay, okay. That means that you can have multiples and still be original, because I did the, uh, the, the plate, 100%. So it's my work. Well, this print was for me the joy of my life in the world of prints because everything went so well and it opened so many doors and so many collections and so many museums and really it was. And what really pleased the public, the museum people, and what really got me uh, all, all uh, happy doing it is the, the, the rhythms within the rhythms, you know, the, um, the point counterpoint, which made it, of course, each thing had an answer somewhere or a contradiction, whatever. Okay. And in any case, yes. So this is etching, mm, this is etching. All these are etching. 
So uh, th this belongs to the Museum of uh, Cleveland Museum. This one was ordered by the International Graphic Arts Society of New York. And uh, that too was very popular. They said very electric, uh, that, that way, almost like a lightning. If you don't get it right the first time, all you do is wipe the, with the gasoline, the varnish, and then you'd start again till you get it right. That's what I loved about it. Because it liberated me from an idea that one had to paint only with brushes. And uh, well, you can paint with any damn thing that comes along that pleases you, that you should do, I think. Well, at least I do. So from very academic approaches, uh, I ended up with my own way because I had a big problem with the uh, seniors in the School of Fine Arts in Paris because they resented my freedom. This is the first stage, as I was explaining. You make uh, stages because you draw in, you, know, uh, you scratch the plate off with, with a needle, sort of, and it's like drawing. Uh, I could have left it this way, but I wanted to go further and give it more relief. Uh, all these movements of uh, someone sending, uh, selling apples, and I called it Eve. Uh, she was tempting the passerby. Here is another technique, which is, uh, what do they call it? A stencil. Making a stencil with uh, uh, a varnish that is called uh, soft, uh, soft ground varnish. Instead of, because this takes and this time to do it one by little one, little, 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 little. it would take too long. So you make a cutout, then you put your varnish in there, and then of course you have to work on it and make it look fluffy and make it look, uh, well, uh, make it look like a cat. Uh, so this was for the Associated American Artists in, in New York. This, you see how you can start very, 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 very confused. I knew what I wanted, more or less, of course. And this is the first state, and this is how it ended, as a lobster. It ended up as a lobster. You see how, how it goes. I had to, of course, push back, push back the background so that this will come out. So the professor, one day he said, I'd like to see you do a flower. I said, oh, wow, oh, a flower. He said, yes, yes, just do it your own way. So. I tried it, and then I've not stopped doing flowers ever again. I mean, I've, I've continued doing flowers and then doing flowers and doing flowers, yes. So off we go. And this is my first flower in prints, a chrysanthemum. Uh, this is a, uh, what would you call a, a shipwreck, uh, shipwrecked. Uh, just, we had so many during the Japanese occupation, uh, the liberation particularly. Yes, so the technique would be too involved. What is interesting here, for those who don't realize how varied the techniques are here, is this is scotch tape that is stuck onto the plate for the acid not to penetrate, and then uh, worked uh, on it. This, uh, the idea here is all these big sweeping uh, rhythms here, straight, 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 and these that are counteracting that, and this pointing in to the boat. No, no, yes. uh, there was a danger that the eye would go out, out, so that I have these things to stop the eye and get it back uh, circulating within the, the etching. I think it was in uh, 1963 or 64, that was at the Luz Gallery, and uh, these were black and white etchings. And uh, when I saw the, um, my first prints, few prints, I was uh, flabbergasted. I was, uh, I was moved because this was uh, so emotional, his prints. It's like uh, nothing I've seen before. It was the quality of the, uh, the lines. They were not perfect and the, uh, the uh, subject matter were those that are uh, really uh, uh, depressing and yet so beautiful. You know, shanties, uh, the uh, bamboos, the roots, decaying things, you know, fat women. So it's really amazing. He was one of the first expressionists I ever encountered. It's not just uh, uh, his uh, drawing style. 
It was the message that he was uh, communicating or expressing. It was, this is uh, not just any ordinary drawing by his, some artist. He was making uh, his, his, uh, his art or his message uh, uh, higher than others. His, uh, his vision is a cut above the rest. In Sanso's art, you really see the details. Uh, Juvenal Sanso is the kind of guy that once he puts himself into a particular type of art, he would really experiment and exhaust all means and modes and methods to achieve the best out of it. And you can really see and examine the detail in every particular work of art that he will ever do. Etching have rewarded me the most in international exposure. Uh, the museums, the great collectors and all this came because I was offering something that nobody had or, uh, or very few artists were devoting their time to that. So it's one of the things I tell the young, because kind enough to ask me if there's a formula to be successful. And I say, well, don't do it my way because it's, it's very hard. I've always dared do what I needed more than what I wanted.